All right, we're going to go into gravity and the uh, gravitational constant, the equation for gravity and what it's all about, uh, this pseudoscientific theory, these, um, these scientism scriptures, basically, of um, mathematical uh, theory, which is not actually real. This is fabricated. It's a fictitious force, as I mentioned in a previous video. But I want to start off with a quote from uh, Goethe, who um, was also a, a geocentrist, and he was against this uh, heliocentric or uh, just a uh, gravity globe model, I believe, period. Um, he understood uh, the real cosmology. And so I'll just read the end of this where he says, uh, I must still say that I curse this modern history theory of cosmology and hope that perchance there may appear in due time some young scientist of genius who will pick up courage enough to upset this universally disseminated delirium of lunatics. Now, ironically, it doesn't take a genius to uh, do away with such a uh, theory. When we go into um, Newton's law, Newton's law of universal gravitation. Uh, over here, it's the second law of motion here. It shows uh, the force <laughs> equals mass times acceleration. This is the uh, formula in the second law of motion. So the universal law of gravitation is basically his claim to fame. This is what everybody's talking about. If there's no gravity, there's no globe. So there must be gravity, right? So if we look at the equation, we have here F is the force between the masses. <laughs> Again, this is the force. Um, so already we're starting off with some scientism here. It's like Star Wars, the force. G is the gravitational constant. M, mass, M2, mass, R, distance between the centers of the masses. Now, here's the gravitational constant as a multiplier. The gravitational constant is denoted by the letter G. Is it an empirical physical constant involved in the calculation of gravitational effects in Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation and in Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity? Here's the value. 6.674 times 10 to the power of negative 11. N, which is a Newton, um, meters squared per kilogram squared. Now, this equation is the heart of of uh, gravitational theory, this uh, this pseudo force here. So if we break this equation down, um, this first part of the equation, of course, equals to a minuscule number. It's a uh, infinitesimal. So right out the gate, it's a suspicious number. Um, this is supposedly the gravitational constant. Uh, now if we go down here, it says the gravitational constant is a physical constant that is difficult to measure with high accuracy. And they can't even measure it. So remember, all this gravity, the answer for everything is um, difficult to measure. The reason is that gravitational force is extremely weak compared to other fundamental forces, like real forces. So extremely weak. Remember, uh, this is the same gravity that's supposedly holding in the water. And making it curve and climb around the ball. It's extremely weak though. And minuscule. And so here's another uh, equation here. Which looks very uh, advanced. And I'm sure it would scare most of us off. But when we look into it. It says the gravitational constant is taken at the, the basis of the Planck units. It is equal to the cube of the Planck lengths. Divided by the product of the Planck mass and the square of Planck time. Here it goes the equation. In other words, in Planck units, g has a numerical value of 1. Thus, in Planck units and other natural units taking g as their basis, the gravitational constant cannot be measured as it is set to its value by definition. In other words, what they're saying is, well, we really can't use this equation. Um, this equation you see here, which is basically a, a dodgy, uh, uh, you know, it's a wishy-washy number, but... Nonetheless, it's uh, very minuscule. Like I said, this um, part of this equation equates to an infinitesimal number. So here it says um, 
In other words, in Planck units, g has the numerical value of 1. Saying that, well, in a lot of multipliers, um, in a lot of cases where this is used as a multiplier, it's going to be used as 1. Um, we're talking about natural units here. And it says here, a purely natural system of units has all of its units defined in this way and usually such that the numerical values of the selected physical constants in terms of these units are exactly one. These constants are then typically omitted from the mathematical expression of physical laws. And while this has the apparent advantage of simplicity, it may entail a loss of clarity due to loss of information for dimensional analysis. It's another way of saying, well, it really, it's, turns out it's omitted, basically. Um, like I said, this can be substituted as 1. So when we go into um, this equation here, if we multiply this by 1, you get the same number, uh, which means it has been omitted. It's, it's, um, it's irrelevant because it's not real. See, it doesn't matter, basically. Um, this is where I'm getting at here. Um, this is a bullshit equation right in our faces, um, the gravitational constant is. So assuming SI units, F is measured in newtons. M1 and M2 in kilograms are in meters, and the constant G is approximately equal to the equation mentioned here. The value of the constant G was first accurately determined from the results of the Cavendish experiment conducted by the British scientist Henry Cavendish in 1798, although Cavendish did not himself calculate a numerical value for G. This experiment was also the first test of Newton's theory of gravitation between masses in the laboratory. It took place 111 years after the publication of Newton's Principia and 71 years after Newton's death. So none of Newton's calculations could use the value of G. Instead, he could only calculate a force relative to another force. They're basically saying <laughs> this is not real uh, for people who can really use their own discernment. Like I said, um, this is calculated as numerical value 1, uh, especially in this equation here. And then this goes into F is measured in Newtons. So what is a Newton? Well, a Newton correlates to the same formula, which is, again, this force equals mass times acceleration, which is like putting a head on top of a head. I mean, mass times acceleration is the mass times acceleration. So they're going to correlate this to a, a Newton and say one Newton equals one kilogram times meter per second squared. Again, which is like putting a head on top of a head. They're just naming something after the fact and calling it a Newton. Um, so here it says the average gravity on Earth, conventionally G equals 9.8 meters per second squared. A kilogram mass exerts a force of about 9.8 newtons. Now, where have we heard 9.8? Well, 9.8 is a free-falling object acceleration. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. They named this um, the acceleration of gravity, but all it is is the acceleration. They're, like I said, they're putting a head on top of a head. It's a very blatant... Um, sham here because when we look at the velocity we get the 9.8 irregardless of something called a newton they're just renaming a phenomenon and this um the sham science <laughs> these are uh, scientism scriptures here that we're going through so i found a another book here uh, engineering mechanics and they also put up the same equation for the value of g this so-called gravitational constant and this means that the force of attraction between two bodies of mass, one kilogram each, when they are at a distance of one meter apart, will be 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 newtons, i.e. this infinitesimal number of newtons. This force is very, very small. In other words, again, it can literally be omitted. And how do you omit something in an equation? Well, as a multiplier, you would turn it into a 1. And this is what is going on. Um, this equation is bunk. It's just a fancy way to say gravity doesn't exist. And we plug this in this equation. 
and then it equals the force. <laughs> Remember this uh this force. F is the force. So this is the religion. They're just um like I said, they're just putting a head on top of a head. Um there's nothing here. This is uh this is like a three card Monty what they're doing. And there is a uh, an admission from Newton that this is basically the case. Where here he says in his uh third letter to Bentley, he wrote that one body may act upon another at a distance through a vacuum without the mediation of anything else by and through which their action and force may be conveyed from one another is to me so great an absurdity that I believe no man who has in philosophic matters a competent faculty of thinking could ever fall into it. So he just slammed his own theory saying that these bodies to this vacuum of so-called space cannot act upon each other without uh, postulating something absurd. Um, so he was very aware of the uh, flimsiness of this uh, theory, which is so-called accepted as law. So again, if there is no gravity, which um, we can show mathematically is not the case, uh, there is no gravity. I mean, basically, it's a sham. It's a false equation that um, when put to test, it doesn't stand up. Um, so I think this clearly shows that gravity is a sham. Um, like I said, it doesn't take a genius to figure this one out. Um, anyone who, maybe even a B student in math, could um, break this down to see that it adds up to nothing. Uh, the gravi gravitational constant is uh, BS. There is none. It's it's omitted. It means it doesn't exist. There is no gravity. Since there is no gravity, there is no globe. So we live on a flat Earth. Peace.